For the first time in about two months, my workstation has its side panel on it. Let's see how we got to that point. And it's gone again. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. So this one's gonna be a little bit of a quick video. I just wanted to bring you up to date on the work that I did to Threadripper this past weekend. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm building a Threadripper 1900X based workstation. It's an eight core, 16 thread system with, at the moment it has 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum, a one terabyte NVMe and a GTX 1080 from EVGA. Great running system. And to this point, it's been air cooled. But my ultimate goal is to do a full hardline liquid cooled system on this build. This past weekend, I decided to break the system down and put my first bit of liquid cooling gear in here. Now, I've only got soft line tubing in here at the moment. Don't worry, that is going away. This will be a hard line loop when it's all said and done. But I wanted to see how the loop would look and figure out any solutions to problems I'm gonna run into now, rather than do my full custom build and then fix the problems later, because knowing me, they're never gonna get solved. So, <laughs> this is all temporary. Uh, for starters, I had to mount the pump and reservoir in here, which actually ran into my first problem. The Inman 303, which by all means is a great case, I'm loving this case so far, does have custom water cooling mounts in here, including mounts for a pump and res. However, the mounts are too far forward in the case and my EVGA 1080 for the wind card runs into those mounts. I can't use the ones that are built in. So what does one do when he runs into that situation? You break out the drill. Using the pump and res backplate and a piece of paper to make a very crude template, to everyone's surprise, including my own, I nailed this on the very first try. Once I knew I was gonna get further than mounting the pump and res this weekend, I decided to break out this. Now this is my Swiftec Prestige TR4 custom water block for Threadripper. Now being as objective as possible, this thing is absolutely gorgeous in black and silver. And I believe according to the spec sheet, it says it weighs a whole heck of a lot. Yep, it's exactly what it says right there. Don't, don't believe me, look it up, I'm, I'm serious. Mounting the water block on the Threadripper, super simple. Mounting the radiator in this case, it could have gone a little bit better. Now, I went with the Alpha Cool Nexos ST30, which so far has been a fantastic radiator, it just didn't fit quite well in this case. Now, I chose this radiator for two very particular reasons. Number one is it's a low fin density radiator. That means I can use a standard airflow fan instead of a high pressure fan and still cool this radiator effectively. And I chose that because of the airflow within the Inwin 303. It brings air in from the bottom and then blows it out the side through the power supply attic. Now, a high pressure fan wouldn't actually be able to exhaust the air out of this case. Uh, I have to use an airflow fan. So this is the perfect use case for this radiator. The other reason is because of the layout of the inlet and outlet. Now a standard radiator has an inlet on one side and an outlet on the same side. In the case of the ST30, it has an inlet on one corner and an outlet on the opposite corner. And since I'm only using a CPU in this loop, I don't have to cross a tube across my entire case to get my water back down to the pump. I say it was difficult to install because the ST30 has inlets both on the front of the radiator and on the back of the radiator, which means there's also metal plugs there that are protruding from the radiator itself. They do end up hitting the metal grill on the back. I backed my screws off just a little bit to give them clearance and it mounts up just fine. Uh, and you run into that kind of thing with these custom builds. Now, I could always cut the grill away that's on the top of the case and make room for those plugs. I'm not that committed and I don't like to modify cases if I don't need to. In this case, I just backed off the screws a little bit, gave those plugs a little bit of room. This is still plenty snug on top. It's not going anywhere. There's eight screws in it. Eight? Ish. I forget how many screws. There's enough screws in it. It's not going anywhere. Like with any custom build, planning is key if you wanna come out with a good product in the end. And this is not my first go around with water cooling. Uh, I did think about loop order for quite a long time and how I wanted the tubing to go and look. And I wanted to go with the soft tubing first to get a feel for how the hardline tubing is gonna go because I've never done hardline tubing before. So this is gonna be fun for both of us. At this point, once the tubing is cut, there's nothing left to do but fill up the loop and red alert, leak, leak, ah, leak. I will say it's not the first fitting that I've had leak, but it is the first one where I just didn't tighten it down far enough. So first one due to my incompetence, not like a failing O-ring or something. So preliminary results are in and I could be more impressed than I am. Now I will say I am still running this under my full overclock of 4.1 gigahertz at 1.4125 volts, I believe is where I'm running at. Uh, so decent results. I'm running at about 62 degrees Celsius under full synthetic load in IDA64 which is not terrible, but I was getting 68 degrees 
on air with a Master Air 621P. Now keep in mind that was with an open side because the side glass panel wouldn't close because this cooler is too tall. But I was hoping for more than six degrees Celsius. Now I think part of that is still due to the fans. Uh, I'm not in love with these in-wind fans. I've said that before. Uh, I don't just don't think they're pushing enough air through this case. Now I think there is improvement to be made there and I will be experimenting with some fans both in an air-cooled system and a liquid-cooled system here in the coming weeks. So if you're interested in fans and getting the best bang for your buck and a little bit of RGB flavor involved in that, stay tuned to the channel. Now another problem I need to solve is my power supply fan is ramping up to 100% and staying there. So when I start gaming, I'll draw up between 500 and 600 watts from the wall. And my power supply, which is a 1000 watt power supply, is easily able to handle it, but I think it's getting too warm. Now my power supply sits behind that top left fan behind the radiator, and I think it's just drawing all that hot air out of that radiator. The problem is, is when I'm done gaming, even when the temperatures have normalized within the case and on the CPU and the graphics card, that fan is not ramping back down. So I think I'm triggering some kind of temperature fail safe. I need to figure that out or swap the power supply potentially because it's really flipping annoying when that fan is buzzing at like 2500 RPM. Hey, look, the door closes. <laughs> Leave me a comment. Let me know what do you think of the build so far? Definitely curious to hear your feedback. Uh, there's still some finished work to be done here, but I'm very happy with the progress I've made. It's water cooled. It's not leaking. The performance is pretty darn decent on it. Still some improvements to be made though. So let me know what you think and stay tuned if you're interested in build progress on this. Also stay tuned if you're curious on what fans I'm gonna be using, uh, as well as what RGB fans you should get in general. I'm gonna be doing a complete two video RGB fan shootout in both an air-cooled and a liquid-cooled system. So find out what RGB fans are best. Do they make a good RGB fan today? Or are you better off going with a standard non-RGB fan to get the best performance? Stay tuned. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Make sure to like this video and follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Also, if you're interested in financially backing this channel, make sure to hit me up on Patreon at Craft Computing. You can get access to my exclusive Discord server where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads every single day. Hit us up with tech news, ask us build advice, get advice on homebrewing. Heck, we talk just about everything over there, and it's always a good time. As always, thank you everyone for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.